Dead Space is back? Dead Space is back? Dead Space is finally back? One of my favourite game series is coming back after an eight year wait, we're finally getting more Isaac Clarke? Yes! Long have I waited! Yes! Dead Space 4 on next-gen consoles! It's a remake. Oh, fuck off, EA. EA killed the franchise with microtransaction bullshit in Dead Space 3, a sequel rushed to release without half the heart of the first two games, and then they screwed over Visceral Games, the team that made these titles any good in the first place, and then, instead of giving us a brand spanking new game, after all this time, they've decided, eh, you'll pay to play the first game again, won't you? Won't you? We don't need to put in any of that, mm, what's it called? Effort. No, no, let's just reskin the original game and call it a day. Daddy made you your favourite, open wide. It's it's a risk to create an entirely new game that offers fresh experiences and pushes the envelope of what the franchise can be, but it's a safe bet to remake the original game that you already know was well received. You've starved the fans for so many years that they will just be grateful for the first bit of dead space that comes their way. Well, it's better than nothing I guess. You know why this remake is unnecessary? Because to create this video, I booted up my PS3 and game recorded Dead Space 1 and 2, and guess what? I still had a blast. These games still run smoothly, and they're still incredibly accessible to a modern audience. There's nothing about them that feels outdated or unplayable. There's no room to improve upon them. They came out a long time ago, and there's no need to alter them. <laughs> If you want these experiences for all the ups and downs as they were in 2008 and 2011 respectively, then go to your local CEX, hold your nose, and pick some copies. They'll probably be, what, a couple of quid? It's not that I think this remake is going to play badly. To the contrary, I think it will probably be a slightly tweaked version of the original game with improved graphics. I just find it so calculated on the part of EA. <laughs> So soulless and designed to milk money out of the original concept. Because if EA really cared about Dead Space, they wouldn't have shut down Visceral in the first place. God damn it, I trusted you! Fuck you! And fuck your marker! They would be greenlighting a fresh title in a universe that didn't need rebooting. I know you're thinking of putting in the comments section, you don't know what this game is going to be. It might not be a complete remake. You don't know whether or not there's going to be new enemies, levels and weapons that were never in the original game. It's going to offer you something new. You haven't even played it yet. Is there air? You don't know. Look, if this game does have new content interspersed with the original structure, then I think that's arguably worse than just a carbon copy. Because if you're going to fuck with the original work, you might as well just keep on creating new levels until you have a brand new game, no? Why settle for Dead Space 1.5 when you could have Dead Space 4? I'm no mathematician, but I'm pretty sure 4 comes after 3. Adding in new content to the remake would only further cement the idea that this is a cash grab in my eyes. Think about what a genius marketing move it is, giving you exactly what you got before, but with the bare minimum amount of new shit in there to trick you into thinking you're getting a new experience. If EA really cared, you'd be getting something new from the ground up. Instead, it's far less of a risk to just Force Awakens the damn thing. We're not sure how to describe a weapon of this scale. It's another Death Star. At best, I could sympathise with a 4K collection of the original trilogy. You might have been too young when the original games came out, or simply missed them and don't have the means to get an older generation console. Next-gen collections in the PS3 era allowed me to go back and play all of the God of War series. It's still not very exciting for pre-established fans, but it's a way to gauge interest in a new title in a way that makes sense to me. This is not the same thing. This is not gauging interest for a new title. This is being treated with the fanfare and prestige of a new title. It's being remade to get all the glory of an original next-gen game without the sweat required to do so. And of course, this remake will make way more money for EA than just a simple collection. I guess it's a bit of a misnomer to say that nobody wants this Dead Space remake, however, because depressingly, when I expressed my distaste with this announcement, several people leapt to defend the reputation of Electronic Arts. Um, I hate to break it to you, but EA didn't stop and just say, hmm, Dead Space Remake or Dead Space 4. They chose a remake because of the continued interest in remakes over the last year, and the idea that you would have just gotten a sequel isn't really fair. If you want a sequel so badly, which is understandable, I'd recommend seeing if this remake is of high quality, and if so, supporting it to help show EA there is still interest in the franchise. Publishers aren't going to take that risk if there isn't proven interest in terms of sales, which there isn't yet. Um... 
No, I shouldn't have to support EA repackaging a game that I supported over 13 years ago when it originally came out in the first place. They don't need my support, they make FIFA for fuck's sake. I supported Visceral Games, who they chewed up and spat out, the teams who actually put care and love into those old games. We've been shouting about wanting more Dead Space for years, EA is well aware of that fact, and they don't need to test the waters with a remake. If they had built Dead Space 4, we would have come. Like the baseball movie, not a porno. This does well, it could bring about the sequel we all want to cap off the original trilogy. This is in all honesty partially a test to see if Dead Space would do well in today's gaming community. I see it as Motive needing to prove that they can handle the IP. The success or failure of this remake will almost 100% determine whether a true sequel is discussed or made. The fact that anything is being made at all is a damn miracle, savour it. I don't understand why people are so ready to defend this shit, nobody needs to prove anything, the proof is in the pudding, Dead Space 1-3, to the fan base eager for more, we don't need to bank on the success or failure of a remake in order to get a sequel. Did we get remakes first to get sequels back in the days of the PS2? EA and many other companies have discovered that they can just repackage what they already gave you rather than go through the tedious rigmarole of creating a new game. And when you sit there and defend it and tell people that it's a miracle and better than nothing that we should for some reason savour what pathetic offerings they throw at us, you just reinforce the idea that this is all okay. We're going to get remakes of many, many, many more games because of this. Look, no disrespect to the team at EA Motive, because it's not really their fault and I'm sure they're working hard, but that doesn't change how icky this feels when EA destroyed Visceral Star Wars project and ended up closing the studio altogether. EA pedals the Frostbite engine in as many games as possible, which was in part what led to problems with Visceral Star Wars project. So it's nice to see that this new game won't use Visceral's proprietary engine from the originals and instead will be using Frostbite. Again. I'm sure it'll run well, Frostbite doesn't equal bad, but it's a signifier of the bullying that EA enacts on its developers. The house always wins. Back in the day, Dead Space drew a lot of surface comparisons to Resident Evil 4. Ironically, it would be great if Dead Space were to rip off Resident Evil right now. RE fans get treated to a mainline continuity, continuous numbered series, with new stories, gameplay and perspectives. Whether you like RE7 and RE8 or not, there's no denying that effort has been made to give the audience something fresh. And if you really just want the old, well, we have a table right over here for you sir, RE2 remake, RE3 remake and possibly more to come. If you're going to do remakes, make it a side hustle and give us mainline entries that mix it up, like what Resi is doing. I guess EA doesn't have the ambition nor the confidence in the property of Dead Space for something like that. And even at that, there's a huge difference in intent between the RE remakes and this Dead Space remake. The original RE 2 and 3 are fantastic, but very dated by modern gaming standards. These remakes take the original bones of those titles to create something new, a third person perspective more reminiscent of RE 4, the very first title to refresh the format. They're basically RE 2 and 3 in all but name. Remakes are creative bankruptcy 90% of the time, but if you're going to craft a considered reimagining that you never could have experienced in any way, shape or form on the original PlayStation, then it's worth doing. And like I said, it's not like this is the only Resident Evil content we're getting, because then it wouldn't be enough. If you've already rinsed RE2 on the PS1 and never want to play it again, don't worry, because you can just ignore all these remakes and jump into RE7. Every Dead Space sequel needs to make the same jump that Dead Space 2 made. It's not necessarily a better game than the first, it depends on who you ask, but it expanded the original material enough to warrant a sequel. Dead Space 2 makes some noteworthy changes, like giving you Iron Man jet boots for the Zero G sections, which made them significantly more fun and less awkward to navigate. The level design was much tighter, no more backtracking, instead you pinged from place to place, exploring different parts of the sprawl. You get to see the outbreak unfold this time, and you even get to return to the Ishimura in one of the game's eerie levels. But the biggest change was Isaac Clarke himself. I was never personally a fan of the silent protagonist, and it was everywhere in games of that era. But the Nathan Drake effect soon took hold, and by the time we came to Dead Space 2, the franchise's lead hero had been given a voice and a personality. The first game tried to get some emotional resonance out of this doomed romance with Nicole, but it struggled to do so with a protagonist that was only a conduit for the player to shoot things. Dead Space 2 featured an ongoing thread where Isaac fought against the creeping dementia caused by the marker, and made made Nicole both a tragic ghost and an intimidating antagonist. Isaac had a credible conflict dogging him both in the real world and inside his own mind, which was fantastic. Sure, the multiplayer of Dead Space 2 was beyond forgettable, but the main bulk of the game was a satisfying follow-up to the first game. Dead Space 3 
did not make the same strides forward. A co-op mode instead of competitive multiplayer? Sure, except it wasn't local co-op and you couldn't access John Carver's tailored story if you were playing alone. Microtransactions all but destroyed the weapon system, the level design was for the most part stale, and it featured the weakest story yet. Plus, human enemies. That wasn't a great move. One massive thing for me personally was the suits. They all suck, they're all bulky and ugly, and to add insult to injury, you can't even get the dope advanced suit from the last game. Why did they put the first game's most iconic suit in, but not the second? I think I would have done another playthrough with a decent suit, honestly. The best addition to the whole game was the melee option you could attach to weapons instead of a secondary fire. That shit needed to be in the next one. Tearing through necromorphs was very fun. EA got cold feet and quietly put the franchise on ice. This was a bad move in my opinion, the franchise wasn't dead, far from it, and a new title devoid of microtransactions and gimmicky multiplayer options would regain the goodwill which was lost. Instead, EA shut down Visceral Games. You go through the trailer for the remake, and it's nothing you haven't seen before, all the designs look just how they were. Compare that to the awesome rush of excitement I got when the first images were released for Dead Space 2. Isaac had gone from being in a space age engineer suit to a more tactical look that was based on samurai armour. It was the perfect aesthetic change up to reflect the Ripley thing he had going on. From civilian to necromorph exterminator. <laughs> from her, you bitch! Even the snowy vistas of 3 presented something different than what we'd seen before, but to go back to the Ishimura in 2021 just seems dull. I know this chapter of Isaac's story. I know what went down. I know what this marker does. I know that Nicole is dead. Mo <laughs> Motive have reportedly said that the remake will add new elements to the story, gameplay, and sound design of the original. There will apparently be no loading screens, meaning you'll be able to traverse the entire ship in one seamless fashion. I imagine Isaac will likely talk and be more essential to the story like in Dead Space 2. All those things sound good. But isn't it a waste of the talent at Motive? You could do all of these things, gameplay tweaks, new ideas, a seamless experience sans loading times, in a new adventure set years after the last game with a weathered galaxy-weary Isaac. What's next for my Isaac? I guess we'll never know. Hopefully he'll pop up in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. If you need more proof that original Dead Space gameplay would be far superior, get a load of this. In July 2018, Ben Wannett, creative director of the original game, spoke to Eurogamer to share the ideas that were being considered for part 4. The ship graveyard in the third game allowed you to freely move from ship to ship, and it was easily the best section of that game. Visceral clearly thought so too, and planned to take this concept even further in part 4. The player would be going from ship to ship trying to find the necessary parts and survivors to get their own vessel working. From there you would be able to travel to other parts of space, and the developers wanted every single ship to be as authentic and interesting to explore as the original Ishimura. The ships you would visit are where the game would get really diverse. The Ishimura had some inkling of that diversity with the variously themed decks, but imagine an entire roster of ship types, each with unique purposes, floor plans, and gameplay. Our original prototypes for the flotilla had some pretty wild setups that I wish we had been able to use. So we went from an open world experience that saw you hopping from several different new Ishimuras to a game where you explore the same single Ishimura you explored 13 years ago. The literal Ishimura. Way! Unlike the remake which will retread familiar beats from a story we've seen before, the cancelled fourth game would have dug deep to give fans the answers they have been seeking since 2000 and fricking 8. Wanat said, I don't want to give away the lore, but I will say that we spent a bit of time working out the origin of the necromorphs and what purpose humans held in this dark universe. Would players find a way out of the necromorph apocalypse? I'd say yes, but they might be sorry they did. Sometimes you're better off with the devil, you know? Wow. Sounds like a bunch of game-changing revelations were set to unfold in the fourth instalment. I can't wait to play it. Remakes don't breed innovation in the same way an original title would. The very first Dead Space was designed from the ground up to have no HUD whatsoever. The result was the rig, a way of displaying vitals to the player from Isaac's back. Visceral could have left it there, but they actually explain the concept of rigs within the world of Dead Space. It's not just for you, it's designed for Isaac's teammates. Well, 
when they're still alive. The idea that your co-workers literally watch your back. The lack of HUD blew me away as a kid. This is one of the first games I got on my PS3, and going through a world where all the pop-up windows and displays were baked into the game was exactly the kind of thing to make you feel like you were playing next gen. The mechanic still holds up incredibly well today, and I'm honestly shocked more games didn't rip it off. But there's no chance of innovation like that if we just go back to the same core ideas and reskin them instead. I'll honestly sign up to the Church of Unitology if the remake features anything as original and inspiring and innovative as the rig. But let's take the consumer out of this. Let's forget about what I'm getting out of a Dead Space 4. Let's think about the original people that made it. They made art. Video games are just as much art as movies. Could you imagine improving the animation of Toy Story by remaking it? I mean, it's old as hell now, right? EA only waited 13 years. Come on, Pixar, where's the HD remake of Toy Story? The whole point of art is that it is imperfect. It is an expression of a personal group of people. You're not supposed to paper over the cracks. Going back and quote unquote fixing the the infamous turret section in Dead Space 1, for example, to make it easier and more in line with the difficulty of that level, would not make for a better experience. That turret section was annoying, but it was Dead Space, for better or worse. The more years that pass, the more that shite turret section only gets brighter. What a fantastic gaming memory. What a fantastic time I had trying to throw my controller at the wall, getting so frustrated trying to beat it, but I wouldn't change a thing. There's no update to the material or reimagining of the gameplay that can entice me into playing the game, and there's no improvements you could make because to say you're improving it is a misnomer in the first place. Uphold the sanctity of the art that was made from the original games. Don't sully them by changing them or quote unquote reimagining them. Honour what came before by being bold enough and daring enough to make something new. Case in point, the Callisto Protocol. <laughs> Visceral's Glenn Schofield is busy working on a spiritual successor to the series with the team at Striking Distance. Judging from the trailer, it's going to be awesome, and even though it might evoke what came before, the stage is set for something else entirely. We need less Dead Space remakes and more Callisto protocols. Don't blame the state of the industry. Companies like EA dictate the shape of the industry. Dead Space 4 was more than possible, whether it was at Visceral or Motive, and now that's never going to happen. I'm sure this remake will sell reasonably well well and inject more interest into the franchise from old and new fans, but where do we go from here? A reimagining of Dead Space 2, then a reimagining of Dead Space 3, it's going to be years and years of this, and then it's going to be years and years until everybody does what they were always going to have to do from the very beginning, sit down and make Dead Space 4. Am I right or incredibly wrong? Do you need to hurl abuse at me? Well, let me know what you think of the Dead Space remake in the comments. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing. I'm on the rim of 300k. I am rimming it and I am loving it. And I would love it if you would come and rim that subscribe account with me too. Could you just subscribe, please? Please, and I'll, I'll just stop rambling. Also, um, I've started a Twitch account, Matt underscore full fat videos. I haven't posted an awful lot lately. I would love to go through Dead Space 1 and Dead Space 2 and possibly even Dead Space 3. Um, I've never done co-op on it before, so that would be cool. Um, so let me know if you would like me to do that, maybe in the comments. Um, let me try and see if I can get some numbers going, because I would like to do it uh, if enough people want it. And if you want to follow me for digital art, you can find me at full underscore fat underscore videos on Instagram. Or if you want to get me on Twitter, you can find me at full fat videos. I really should have thought about making all the handles the same when I did this, but I'm a moron. Please excuse me. <sighs> Tell you what though, this has really made me want to go back and play Dead Space, so I think I'm going to do that now. Bye. A big personal thank you to our full fat tier patrons, Dr. Chike, Jax Merrick and Cyrus Solker. Your ongoing support keeps the lights on. Until next time, keep it full fat.